Hey guys, it's Chase, and I'm back with another edition of Campaigners in a Virtual Format. This is going to be the fourth YouTube video that we've posted on the Buckeye Valley Young Life YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out those other videos, I highly recommend them. I strongly encourage you to go back and watch them, either pausing this video and going and doing that, or watching them after this. Um, I'm really excited to be able to spend this time with you. I'm really excited to teach about some of the things that God has been revealing to me the things that he's been putting on my heart, and encouraging you as we transition into a new year. As we end 2020 and as we move into 2021, as we end this winter break and transition into the new school year, new school semester really. Um, but guys, I have been blown away recently by what God has been teaching me. And the most important thing, and I guess really the thing that I've been encouraged by the most has been that Christ is an advocate to us. If you remember back to pre-COVID, pre-quarantine, back when we were able to gather in Maddie and Connor's basement in a big circle sitting on their wall, I was able to teach on 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2. It was a part of a series that we did on the book of 1 John, and it was only two verses, but guys, it's jam-packed with a lot of really good stuff. And I want to go back to that verse tonight. I want to teach on that, and I won't have the time that I would like to teach on it. The first campaigners that I gave on it was 30 to 40 minutes, uh, but this is only about to be probably 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm not going to touch on all the things that I did so long ago, but I really want to talk about the main themes of this video, to, or of those verses. And I really want to focus on Christ's heart for us in advocacy, how deeply personal advocacy is for Christ to us. Now, to be an advocate is to stand between. Back a long time ago in that campaigners, I gave you an analogy of us sitting in a courtroom. So imagine you have just sinned. Fill in the blank on what sin it is. It does not matter. But you are sitting in a courtroom at a table in the place of a defendant. And you have no argument for your sin. You have no justification for why you've sinned. No reason for why you would choose creation over the creator. And we have God sitting in his seat as judge above all of us. We are sitting here looking up to him. He's wearing his black robes and has a gavel. And we really have no argument. We're dead in our tracks. We have no justification. But our defendant does. Our advocate does. Our lawyer does, if we want to continue with the analogy. Jesus brings our case. He provides our evidence. And he stands between God and us when we sin. To continue this analogy before we read the verse, Jesus points to his own righteousness. He points to his own perfection rather than allowing us to be dead in our sins. And I'm going to read this verse here. If you want to pause the video and go to that scripture, you can. If you want to just steamroll through this with me, you're more than welcome to do that also. But I'm going to read this here. It's 1 John chapter 2, verses 1-2. through 2. And it reads, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. And there's a lot to unpack there, like I said. But really what I want to focus on is one important point that John presents here. He says, my children. He says, my dear children. He's pleading to us. He is begging us to listen to what he has to say next. Whenever an author in scripture says something like that, Pay attention to what they're about to say. It is probably one of the more important themes of the Bible. And what John has to say here is that he is writing to us so that we will not sin. The Bible is pretty clear about sin and its destructive capability. And what John is saying here is please do not sin. To all of your might, to all of your will, try not to sin. But he is saying that it is an unrealistic expectation that you will never sin again. When we start to believe in Christ, when we start a relationship with him, it is not a guarantee that we will no longer sin from that point forward. In fact, there are going to be 
times where we even are more aware of the sins that we have in our life, the the sins that occur to us um, or occur for us. And what we really are dealing with here is a guarantee that if we do sin, that we have an advocate in Jesus Christ that will provide for us the argument of our case, the argument that we are not guilty, the argument that we are free of any consequence of our sins. So while we should not continue going on sinning, or we should not continue to sin and live in our sinful ways, if we do, if we fall into that trap again, if we fall into sin again, we have an advocate in Jesus that presents a case for us that wipes our slate clean. And that's a beautiful picture, guys. It's a beautiful picture of what Jesus does for us, what he has done for us on the cross, and what he's continuing to do for us in that courtroom, uh, what he's doing for us now in advocacy. The final thing I want to share is an excerpt of, of sorts from the book Gentle and Lowly. It's a book that I've been reading recently by Dane Ortland. And he talks about advocacy here on these two verses. And so I just want to read them for you. It's going to be pretty much verbatim. I might add my own little twist in here, here or there, and I'll I'll make that pretty clear by my points. But here's what he says about advocacy. Note the personal nature of Christ's advocacy. It is not a static part of his work. His advocacy rears up when occasion requires it. The Bible nowhere teaches us that once we have been savingly united with Christ, we will find grievous sins to be a thing of the past. Meaning, what I had said, that once you believe in Christ, you stop sinning. That's not true. Once you believe in Christ, you will still deal with the problem of sin. He says, on the contrary, it is the regenerate state that has more deeply sensitized us to the impropriety of our sins. Our sins feel far more sinful after we have become believers than before. And it's not only our felt perception of our sinfulness. We do indeed continue to sin after becoming believers. Sometimes we sin big sins, and that's what Christ's advocacy is for. It's God's way of encouraging us not to throw in the towel. Yes, we fail Christ as his disciples, but his advocacy on our behalf rises higher than our sins. His advocacy speaks louder than our failures. All is taken care of. So guys, when we look to that, and I love the final line. The last line of this paragraph is beautiful. All is taken care of. I know that this year has been hard. I know that there have been things that we have struggled with in 2020. It has been a difficult year. It has maybe been a difficult walk with Christ this year or when you've tried to be in a relationship with him in the past. But be encouraged, guys that Christ is our advocate, that God created Jesus to be an advocate for us so that we wouldn't throw in the towel. Jesus lived a perfect life on earth, and he lived it on earth, the same earth we walk now. He knows how hard your trials and your tribulations are. He knows how challenged you have been in this year and in whatever things you might struggle with. But guys, all is taken care of. If we choose to believe in Christ, He will stand between us and God. When we are guilty, dead in our tracks, Jesus gives us a case so that the consequences of our sin will no longer exist. He died on the cross, an action that was completed thousands of years ago, but he continues to this day, in this very present, to live with us, to advocate for us, to intercede for us, to be the atonement for us. We will not stop sinning. We are encouraged to stop sinning, but it is unrealistic to believe that we will. And when we do, we know that we have an advocate in Christ. We know that Jesus is here for us. In this moment, he is here for us when we sin. That we are in a courtroom, that we sit at the table of the defendant with no case to present to God. But Jesus stands up, stands before his father and points to himself and says, No, God, do not look at their sin. Do not look at their messiness but look at my righteousness. Look at my perfection. That Jesus points to himself and says, look at what you sent me to do. Look at what I did on the cross. Look at what I endured for them, for my friend. And he points to you and he says that. And he says, he is but a human. He is meek. He is flesh. He is weak. 
but I'm strong. I was both God and man. I lived a perfect life. And guys, that brings me so much encouragement. That brings me joy to be able to share that message with you. And I know that the medium is not perfect. I know that YouTube and teaching on a virtual screen is not fun. It's not, it's not as enjoyable as being in person and seeing all of your faces and seeing you. And I know that learning this way is not fun all the time. But guys, believe in that truth. Believe that you are represented by Jesus in the courtroom. Believe that God stands before and sits before you as a judge and does not see your failure as something that he can punish, but he sees Jesus, that your righteousness does not count, but Jesus' righteousness cloaked upon you is what's worth everything. All is taken care of, guys. I pray that you would take that message with you. Um, guys, bear in pride, bear in boys, everything in between. Go BV, FHH, whatever it is. I don't know how to end this video, but take that truth and run with it. Love you guys.